I had this elder a couple weeks ago tell me, when you're on the land, you're all family. And I think it's so true. We're on a 12 day canoe trip out here on the Pensive Lake Loop down at the end of the Ingram Trail. The participants are a dozen youth from the Decho region and then almost a dozen youth from the Katikmiat region. This is my first time canoeing and I like it so much. I like it here. I like it pretty much better than home. My name is Chad, I'm from Cougar Group, and I'm 14. I am Jackson Foreman, and I'm from Fort Simpson, and I am 12, turning 13 in August 29th. My name is Joshua Cassoni, and I'm from Cambridge Bay. I've never been on any canoe trip, but this is my first canoe trip, and it's the best I've been on. There's a couple different reasons why we're here. The first one is to get kids out on the land, have a, a fun and safe canoe trip, um, make new friends, particularly make cross-cultural friends and have a cross-cultural exchange really between the Northwest Territories and Nunavut, and also for canoe safety training skills. So we're running a series of Paddle Canada certified courses for the youth over the 12 days. So we're removing, we're on our canoe trip, but we're also finding time for training and skill development. We have a lot of portages coming up, and I think we a little bit are like worried about it, but I think that that's gonna show the kids a lot of what they're capable of. So that's exactly what you're gonna do like a lot this trip. Gravity just takes the water and moves it through the hose into the filter and then the clean water goes into here. So you have one person holding the water bottle steady so you're not gonna spill any of our precious fresh water. And the other person can help them fill it up. So obviously you don't wanna be somewhere that we can see you or like smell it, right? How much toilet paper am I using? Am I gonna use the whole roll? Do you guys wanna go canoeing? Yeah. yeah. You guys are not coming straight at us. Uh, it's kinda of hard to go in a straight line. I think the first time we went canoeing, that was probably the most challenging. The first time I paddled, it was pretty hard. Starting to get the hang of it. I was breathing so hard after like five minutes going, I was breathing so hard. It was really difficult. Nothing worthwhile is easy, and you can learn a lot by, yeah, going in the bush and solving the problems that you run into. Today I spent the whole day in the water, about five hours. The water's a lot warmer here than where I'm from. Too cold to swim in Kruger Group, and there's no swimming pool. Go, Jordan! <laughs> My first time meeting all of these kids from Kugaluk and the Decho kids. Go, Donald! Oh, the double win. That was a good battle, boys. Holy oh, silent. <laughs> yeah, it's going good so far. We're getting along good. <laughs> I'm not strong. <laughs> oh, we already see that muscle sticking out. It's a leg. It's hard to put it. You did it, John! Ayalik and Deicho slowly started to talk, and from there we started getting close. Okay, this one and this one. Oh, that's one each. Yeah, so a couple of nights ago we were playing hand games. It's a traditional Dene game. 
gambling game. Well, we weren't gambling because we're underage. We were teaching the Inuit kids how to play, and they learned, and they thought it was really fun, and I think it's really fun. My favorite part of this trip is being out in the woods and paddling. We're going to Ross Lake. It's lots of fun canoeing on the water. It's a lot of work, though. I forgot who got it. Portaging is like a pain in the ass. Very painful, but it's fun. After my eighth canoe I carried, my head started getting sore. Blood, sweat, and tears. Hey, Keith. Hi. How's it going under there? Huh? You're almost there. Mosquitoes. The first portage, that was really hard because we would go up a hill, down a hill, back up, and I thought it was like only just across a mountain, but we have to like turn, more turns and keep going. After that, I just, fuck, I just like laid down. And I was like, no, I can't do this. Fuck, I just wanna pass out. The portages on this trip are very good. Good for exercises and to lose in weight. Awesome, dude, you got this, man. That's okay. How about, okay. Okay. Oh, you wanna? Portages, like there's portage, then we just have to canoe for three minutes, then portage again. That's a nine. How many more portages do we have to do? I think five more today. <laughs> I think so. And for the trip? Uh, 24, maybe? I think that's right. That's right. This is portage number one. Yeah. Tell us about the portages. Um, carry a lot of stuff over a hill through the woods with mosquitoes. This is the official brochure for this route that we're on. The Pensive Lakes route offers a unique combination of upstream travel, lakes, lining, portaging, and whitewater paddling. This variety is excellent training for those wanting to complete more intense, longer trips northern Canada. So this is the year number one. So in year number two and three, we're planning to do trips in the region. So in the Daycho and in the, the Katikmiut, and we're looking at doing progressively more remote, bigger, longer river trips. I wanted to put the kids in a situation that wasn't easy for them and I wanted them to have the experience of needing to work together as a team to overcome these big challenges and feeling proud of themselves and satisfied that they in the end accomplished it. Some parts were tough, but we managed to make it through. Every other time, it's the limbs have broken or it was too thin. If you look here, it's more curved than this part. This part's a bit thicker here than you're right here. And if the wood has too many knots in it, then it's like a weak point and it breaks. I soaked it in water for two hours, so it was pretty good, and that was a, that was a thumbs up. Yeah. So you want me to shoot it? Yeah, do it. It's good enough. I guess it could kill a rabbit. 
Today we're going uh, down all the way down down here. Listen to this last sentence. The white water and the remoteness of this route combine to make it a trip suitable for experienced paddlers. What does this mean? Go to you. Come to me or go. What does this mean? Stop. Stop. So these are going to be the important paddle signals we're going to use today. What does the person in the back need to do today? Communicate. They need to tell the person in the front what to do. Give me a hard paddle. Give me a draw. Give me a cross draw. So you guys need to be able to um, control your boat. There has to be a captain in the boat or else the ship is going to sink. Yeah, the kids did well. I mean, some of them did well. Some of them got wet. That's how you get better as a whitewater canoeer is you have to make mistakes, get up, and learn from them. Yeah, I would like to be a guide one day. It was my first time doing whitewater, and I thought it was going to be really scary, but it turns out it was fun. So guys, here we are, Tibet Lake with only one portage between us and the vehicles tomorrow. What? I lie. <laughs> this trip basically helped me reflect on myself. I got time from internet, social media. I got to be with other people. And it was kind of like a nice thinking place for me because in Fort Simpson it wasn't the best time for me. So the canoe trip really helped me look at myself and reflect on myself. We are not officially experienced paddlers. I think that Dan definitely picked a really hard trip, but the value of that level of difficulty really paid off. You have to be prepared for the worst, prepared for the best. You also have to paddle hard. You're going to have to help carry stuff, even though how hard it is. You have to be like that kind of person that doesn't quit like that. You can't give up. It's impressive to see kids, you know, have the maturity and the work ethic and just the intelligence to figure things out as a group. There's fewer things that are more rewarding to see happen right in front of you. <laughs> it was a little hard, but it was still fun, eh? It's way. The trip is over and I feel better. I feel clean, I feel stronger, and feel better without smoking. Before this trip, I was smoking a lot of weed, but now, after this trip, I feel like not smoking weed anymore. This trip meant a lot to me. It was so much fun. And my first time to experience something different. And seeing a lot of different things than back home. When I go back, I can call myself an experienced paddler, I guess. 
changed me in a lot of ways.